this lecture we'll create the static flow and some important methods which will manipulate our base physics variable so after this wall variable let me just comment it out to show you that this is the static floor and after this what you're gonna do is firstly we'll have a static body variable and this variable which we initialize the body so from this pi monk we have the body class and that body will just pass it as body dot type and the type will be here that is body let me say it is pm first and pm dot body dot static so it won't be dynamic here so it will be the static body so let's go to the documentation and check what is this basically so we are dealing with the pm body so you can go to classes here that is pi monk body and check here that is if it is dynamic or static so this uh, cp body type dynamic really means it is used to modify the rigid body basically so uh, this is likely to be the more stable so for that case we have used in order to modify the rigid body we have here a uh, pbm body static and similarly will say static lines now so let me say new variable that will be static lines and let me just maintain a list for the static lines and that will be pm dot segment first so there is a segment methods or a segment class you can also check in this documentation in order to see the segment that is pi monk dot segment under this class section so you can go and check it out so firstly what you're gonna pass is static body that is the body we just created and similarly first thing we're gonna pass is here some variables so so first thing here we're gonna pass is uh, some of the points and let me just give it this point and quickly show you what this point is really about so let me say that is 1200.0 and 06 0.0 again here and similarly outside this tuple 0, 0.0 and we're good to go here so you can see here first one is a static body so a static body is the body to attach the segment with so it has the created a segment in which this static body will be attached and a here that means this part is a that means it is a first in point and this part is second in point of the segment and this 0.0, .0 is the radius of the segment that means we have no radius for the segment so we have created this static line so let me just create again static lines but in this case it will be one and we'll also maintain a list here that will be pm dot segment we'll call this class and passing this same static body but it will be a will be now the first in point will be now second in point and the second in point will be now first in point so let's create that firstly so firstly what we're gonna have is 1200.0 and 0, 06, 0, 0.0 that is our first in point in this case of this static lines we have this as a second in point but in case of static lines one it is the first in point so what will be the second in point so second in point will be 1200 from that position will take 800.0 so we have maintained the second so let me just remove this one and let me just give a radius again that would be 0.0 and we have now static lines one so this is the list basically static lines one and static lines that means we can iterate to give the physics property to each of this line so that means we just use now looping in order to iterate in this static lines and that would be first is let's loop in static lines and just give the property to this line that is the elasticity property first and just give this 0 0.95 that is basically for the bounds and similarly we'll say friction would be one and collision type so if you wonder what is this collision type was so basically this will be handled in the add collision handler so if you wonder what this collision type is basically so go to this character dot py and you can see this collision type was given a zero for this bird and pig has collision type one and if you go to this polygon and you can see the collision type was given 
the unique number to each of these beams and also for the characters and also the column and beam has a basically collision type same because they are basically words and in the character that is a word and pig has different collision type so that means we have to have this line 2 with a different collision identifier that will be 3 and now what you're gonna do is we'll just iterate now again for this static lines 1 from this another loop that will be static lines one and just give the property to this line so that would be first elasticity property and just give the same that is the 0 0.95 value after that we'll just give now friction and that would be one line dot collision type so since they are the both the line so i'll just give three here so we are done with this static floor so next thing what we're gonna add is just in this space you're gonna add these static lines so to be line first and the next thing what you're gonna do is we'll define the important function that would be two pi game function so i have told you that why this pi game was important in the case of dealing with this polygon dot py so i have said you that we have this two pi game and it would take this p parameter so this was basically pi monk taking the gravity weight of the object and just converting it into the vectors from this pi game uh, that would be important for this pi game module so same will be in the case of this two pi game in the main two so it will just return us something that will be int and p dot x and similarly i'll just int another that is p dot y and plus 600 so this is basically a standard formula in order to convert um, basically the pi monk into this pi game coordinates so after that we're gonna define another function with a vector and just give you a p naught and p1 as an argument and what this p naught and p1 is basically so this will just return the vector out of these points so we have given a point here vector of points p naught and p1 so it will just return as a vector return the vector of this p naught and p1 so let's do that how to return the vector so for that what we're going to do first is we'll just make something that is a variable here and that would be p1 taking this p1 and first element and similarly p1 of zeroth element similarly we'll be making b and inside this b that is of first element and similarly we'll say that should be minus here not equals that should be minus and similarly next would be p naught of one after that we have now vector and just return as it form that is a comma b so it will return us a vector so after that we'll just define another function that is important function and that is hard to have this unit vector so it will take a vector and returns the unit vector of the point v so how to calculate this vector or a unit vector for that we'll just make a new variable yes and this will calculate this unit vector that means uh, if we have this vector points vector points will have the v naught and v1 so i'll say something that is the first element of the vector should be first square that is this basically this uh, double asterisk is for power and plus what you're gonna have is v and that would be one here that is the second element of the vector and just give it a power two again and outside of this just give a power a 0 0.5 so basically what we are having is root under v naught square plus v1 square so after that we'll check if h is equal equal zero that means what you're gonna have now is let me just see here what you're gonna have now so we'll just assign now h is zero point and this is really interesting because it is a standard but it will have nearly that is 14 zero now so let me count it should be exactly the 14 zero so we have now 14 zero so after that what we're going to have is we'll just use this uf variable 
or create a uf variable with this vector of o divided by h and similarly u of b as in vector 1 divided by h after that just will return u a and u b so basically these are the two unit vectors or these are basically the unit vectors so we return the unit vector from here that is unit vector a position and unit vector v position so this is basically standard formula in order to check for the unit vector so next thing what we're gonna do is we'll just define a distance and this distance will take x not x not in y not and x comma y so how this distance will be calculated so if you have a line or if you have this line basically and you need to calculate the distance between this line that is the distance between this point or the distance of the line that is let me say it is at x naught and y naught and similarly this point is at x and y that is the same point that we passed in the case of distance here so what you're gonna do is we have the formula that is distance equal to root under this point x minus x naught whole square plus y minus y naught whole square so this will be the formula so let's put that formula in this function so let's go here and just firstly we'll say dx should be x minus x naught and dy should be y minus y naught so after that what you can do is just create a d here and that would be root under so for that we'll say first dx power 2 that is square so that would be dx power 2 and similarly after that what you're gonna have is plus and create dy square again that is similar as root under uh, basically this is similar as x minus x not square plus y minus y not square now we'll say into 0 0.5 that means root under it should be under root so after that just return this d that is the distance so this is the wrap for this video so in the next video we'll implement some of the few important methods so see you there